Republican Congresswoman Lauren Boebert humiliated herself at a hearing on Wednesday, obsessed over the false claim that the District of Columbia had decriminalized public urination. Her fellow Boebert, Marjorie Taylor Greene, claimed that Canada is participating in an invasion of the United States, and Donald Trump has reportedly asked his aides to draw up battle plans to attack Mexico if he's re-elected president. For more on this, and I do mean more on, <laughs> it's time for a closer look. This won't come as a shock to you, but a lot of really dumb <laughs> happens in Congress. This is a place where famously a senator once held up a snowball to disprove global warming, and a <laughs> member of Congress vaped during a congressional hearing. Check out the coolest kid at the sleepover, everybody. <laughs> I stole it from my stepdad's glove compartment. <laughs> Smoking is obviously horrible and disgusting, but somehow vaping looks even worse. I mean, can you imagine Keith Richards with a jewel pen in his mouth? <laughs> Bloody hell, this thing tastes like cotton candy. <laughs> of course, Keith Richards wouldn't smoke a jewel. He would just eat the pods. I can't imagine <laughs> this is what the Founding Fathers had in mind when they created Congress. Or maybe it is, I don't know, those guys were weirdos too, just chopping down cherry trees left and right and wearing wigs to meetings, you know? <laughs> Benjamin Franklin probably high on hemp all the time. Why else would you tie a key to a kite in a lightning storm? <laughs> Plus, he had all those famous sayings that only a stoner would come up with. Whoa. You ever notice, like, a penny saved is also, like, a penny earned? <laughs> I think I'm gonna go bald on top, but let my sides grow long. <laughs> It'll be so <laughs> hilarious. And both of those low lights, the snowball and the vape, were before the MAGA weirdos even came along. That was the baseline level of stupid we were already working with before people like Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene showed up, and they seemed to take it as a challenge. They looked at that and said, you think that's dumb? Hold my jewel. <laughs> For example, at a Homeland Security hearing this week, Greene claimed that the nation of Canada was helping Mexico violate American sovereignty. It's extremely concerning and, and dangerous to the United States of America's national security that Canada's immigration policy allows Mexicans to travel to Canada without a visa. It seems that Canada wants to participate in, in Mexico's invasion of the United States. One of the invaders even brought a snowball into the capital, <laughs> otherwise known as a Canadian grenade. That clip is yet another reminder that even when it comes to the border, the one thing you think Republicans actually cared about, they have no serious ideas. Take, for example, this insane report from Rolling Stone yesterday, which said that Donald Trump has asked his advisors for battle plans to attack Mexico if reelected. One source said attacking Mexico, or whatever you'd like to call it, is something that President Trump has said he wants battle plans drawn for. Whatever I'd like to call it, I'd like to call it the last straw for reasonable Republicans, but those people always seem to have one more straw. You can. <laughs> Just picture Lindsey Graham saying, if Donald Trump were to draw plans to invade Mexico, that would be the last straw for me. Oh, he just did that. Oh, he did? Well, would you look at that. <laughs> One more straw for Lindsey. <laughs> not only is this fully unhinged, but it's also very funny to imagine Donald Trump, who is very much not the president and does not have access to generals or military advisors or covert intelligence, just sitting around as omelet bar in Florida with his council of bozos and dip asking them to draw up battle plans like any of them know what the that means. I'm sure Rudy Giuliani is on top of it. Boss, I made a contact in Mexico and give us inside information. Code name, Senior Frogs. <laughs> and yet, that was somehow not the dumbest thing that a prominent Republican setter did this week because there was also Lauren Boebert, who, fun fact, is the descendant of the Confederate general Doinkus Boebert, who famously slept through the Battle of Gettysburg. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Boebert put on perhaps the most embarrassing spectacle of her time in Congress this week, and that's saying a lot. Now, here's some quick context. The city of Washington, D.C. passed an updated criminal code a few months ago, but Republicans freaked out and painted it as soft on crime, which it was not. And along with many Democrats, they trampled on Washington, D.C.'s right to govern itself by overriding the local government and stepping in to block the law, which is obviously unfair and undemocratic. Now, both houses of Congress voted to overturn the D.C. bill, and Joe Biden signed the measure to overturn the D.C. bill. And as an aside, I have to say that Joe Biden thinks he knows what's better for the city of Washington, D.C. than the people in Washington, D.C. who actually live there. And I know he technically lives there, too, but he lives in the White House. That would be like telling people you're a real New Yorker when you actually live in the M&M store. Best thing about living in New York, the unlimited candy. 
Like, the city of Washington, D.C. didn't turn around and pass a law requiring Joe Biden to grab both handrails when he goes up the stairs. <laughs> I think I know what happened. He, he vaped right before he got on that flight. <laughs> Whoa, I'm tripping on stairs and I'm tripping balls. <laughs> anyway, that's the gist. Congress overturned the D.C. law, so it never took effect, and it never will. And yet, Lauren Boebert, who, let me remind you, is in Congress did not seem to know that because during a hearing, she grilled one of the local D.C. lawmakers who crafted the bill and seemed to think that the bill she voted to overturn was actually now law in the city of D.C. In November of 2022, you led the charge to reform D.C.'s crime laws. Is that correct? I chaired the committee that that proposal came from. You led us. this charge, yes, sir. And uh, these charges, these changes, are now law here in D.C., correct? Do you mean the revised criminal code? Yes. Uh, no, those are not the law. Those are not the law. Did, with you, the, you the revised, revised you, you criminal code them. was uh, rejected by... Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, I'll talk to Mr. Allen. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman, stop correcting me while I'm already being corrected by a different person. <laughs> I don't like being corrected by a bunch of people at once. It reminds me of every minute of my life. <laughs> now, Mr. Allen, let me ask you this. The District of Columbia, that's located in South America, correct? <laughs> I can't even begin to wrap my head around how dumb this is. She had to be corrected by the witness about a bill she voted on. There's a good chance she doesn't even know she's in Washington, D.C. right now. She probably needs one of those mall maps that tell you where you are, except for the entire country. <laughs> but the exchange gets way dumber from there, because even after being told that the revised criminal code is not the law in D.C. because it was overturned by Congress, which, again, Lauren Boebert is a member of, Boebert continued to press the witness on the specific issue of public urination. She desperately wanted to know if D.C. had downgraded the crime of public urination, and yet again, she humiliated herself. Yes, Mr. Allen, did you or did you not decriminalize public urination in no, Washington, D.C.? Did you lead the charge to do so? No, it, the revised criminal code left that as a criminal charge. Did you lead the charge to decriminalize public urination in Washington, D.C.? No, ma'am. That in the Did you ever vote in favor of decriminalizing public urination in Washington, D.C.? The revised criminal code that was did passed you by the ever council support kept it as a criminal offense. Did you, did, and you support this? Criminal? I voted for it, yeah. You voted to keep it as a criminal offense. That's correct. The full council did. What is wrong with, are you not <laughs> capable of doing a Google before appearing? At committee hearings in Congress, or does Boebert think doing a Google is also slang for public urination? Because <laughs> definitely sounds like something they'd say in Australia. Drive a pullover. I gotta do a Google on the side of the road. <laughs> Here's my theory. I think Lauren Boebert's staff hates her and gave her bad information as a prank. Uh, Congresswoman, here's all that information you uh, requested on public urination. <laughs> Thank you, wow, this is great. According to this sponsor, I wanna get this right, the sponsor of this bill was a councilman named IP Mapants. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You, you should say that when the cameras are on. <laughs> Eventually, Boebert decided to throw in the towel because at the end of that exchange, after she was once again proven wrong, she just gave up and yielded back her time. We have records that show that you were in favor of removing that criminal offense and allowing public urination? No, the... Is that something that you intend to pursue in the future? No, the legislation that you're referring to that came from the Criminal Code Reform Commission changed public urination from a criminal to a civil offense. The council then changed that to maintain it as a criminal offense at the request of the mayor. Thank you, I yield. Thank you, I yield, and now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going back to my office to figure out what the f I actually do here. <laughs> Although later in the hearing, when a Democratic member of the committee took a swipe at Boebert, Boebert actually piped up as if she wanted another shot at the whole public urination discussion. They're choosing to waste our time by meddling in the District of Columbia and talking about public urination over and over. Just want to make sure, do you have anything additional you want to say about public urination? Now's your time. I do. Um, um... No, not you. I'm talking to, <laughs> it's, not, it's not your time. She basically said, you should get out of here, shoo. <laughs> Not only does Bober want to keep talking about public urination, she doesn't even know how congressional hearings work. She was talking to the witness, not you. But I guess asking if you have anything to add on public urination in front of Bobert is like saying to my kids, anyone have 45 minutes of punctuation-less thoughts about dinosaurs? I do, I do. Oh, theropods have hollow bones and three toes on each limb, enough. 
All of this once again proves that even when they hold power, as they do now in the House, Republicans are not a serious governing party. They can't be bothered to do anything about real issues that affect real people, but they seem to have plenty of time to fantasize about bombing Mexico or fending off a non-existent invasion from Canada. They can't stop embarrassing themselves. In fact, in Boebert's case, she was so humiliated, I think she might have been guilty of... Public urination. This <laughs> has been a closer look.